Hey, welcome back to Two Stupid Guys Trade Socks. I'm Dylan. And I'm Vinny. And TLT looks like has given us another chance to accumulate shares. We're going to kind of look at what I've been doing and uh, Michael Burry's old trade. And if it's time to accumulate, which I don't know. I have no idea. I'm not telling you anything. Two Stupid Guys Trade Stocks. All right. So, um, full disclosure, I have a lot of TLT. Um, I had 450 shares, but I'm playing around with the wheel strategy that we talked about earlier. I'm gonna show you kind of exactly what I'm doing because it's not, it's not actually a wheel strategy because I'm trying to make the puts. I'm trying to get called, which is not what you're trying to do in a wheel strategy. So okay. it's, it's, not, it's not a true wheel strategy. Um, here is the graph. So if you look at this, I am operating between like a 97 and a 93 kind of range. I, I don't think we're going to go back in the 80s. I think it's unlikely. It's possible. That's fine. Yeah. If I get caught, I'll just hold my shares here for a long ass time. That's no problem. Um, <laughs> but kind of this, this red, if you can see it, is 97. And can you see my mouse? Yeah, I can. Okay, cool. And then this is like 92.50-ish. So we're kind of in that range approaching again. Um, these are two that I did. So I initially did this 93, just $110 on two contracts, not that much. What I realized is that I'm, I'm trying to get caught. So I don't, <laughs> I'm making, I'm not even really trying to do covered calls. I'm more trying to get caught at the bottom and sell in the 97 range, which did not work. I will show you <laughs> why. Um, but I've already got a grand basically in a premium from these because I'm trying to get caught in this 95. I got assigned. Um, if you just type in Fed rate, Fed interest rate, just and there's go to news. This is this is the story, right? So yeah, we were a little bit nervous of the news that came out, but everyone seems to be sticking with the three cuts. Okay. Potentially, right. you're, you're definitely seeing some within the it's been the thing uh, of the last couple of years, I guess, is to figure out what the next move of the Federal Reserve has been uh, or will be. Sorry. Um, but this right here is a CME Fed watch tool. So this is looking at percentage based probabilities for various Fed funds rates at each meeting date. So right now, the CME watch tool is calling for the first rate cut with 55 percent likelihood uh, to occur at the June 12th meeting. Now. This tool has been, uh, it's really about emotions of, of the people that are, you know, trying yeah. trading these options. Not so accurate. it's been completely incorrect because I want to say at one point it was calling for a first rate cut to be in March uh, at the very minimum. And it, I think it was September 2023. There was like a 30 or 40 percent chance in March, which no. Yeah. Yeah. And it, no, it's just not happening at this point. It's just, it, it keeps getting pushed further and further out is yeah. what I'm trying to say there. Which yeah. is great if you're trying to do what I'm doing because it gives you more options to get premium. Ideally, if I could have no rate cuts this year, that'd be great. It's just not going to happen. I Well, I'm not 100% certain. I don't think, I think we're going to get rate cuts. But I actually, yeah. it would be great if we don't. Um, not for buying houses. That's a different conversation. So yeah. here's what actually happened Basically, the CPI increased 0.4% for the month, 3.2% uh, a year ago. It was in line with expectations, but the 12 month was 0.1% higher. And then core CPI rose 0.4% the month and was up 3.8% the year. Both were 0.1% higher than what they were thinking. Um, There's a 2.3 increase in energy costs, which helped boost, but it's not really important. The important thing is we were slightly under the expect, sorry, we were slightly higher on the expectation. Yeah. And then this is kind of a cool chart. So this shows the U.S. consumer price index month over month percent change. So you kind of see 2020 and 2022, it was kind of gross, kind of scary, yeah. right? Rip roaring, basically, yeah. This this last kind of half of this graph, you really see that over the course of six months, mm -hmm. it, it kind of goes up and down, up and down, up and down. It's kind of in like a chop. Well, yeah. So you remember when we harken all the way back to uh, the infamous Michael Burry warning talking about uh, how inflation may even go lower in the second half of 2023, but this is not the last peak of the cycle. Um, it looks like right now we're maybe we're heading towards an intermediate peak. Uh, you know, 
we made some significant progress where, you know, headline CPA was like 9% at one point in time. And now we're, we've moved down to looking at, you know, high 3% on the core, like 3.8. It's still double what the, the actual expectation of the Federal Reserve is to get us back to 2%. Um, although things are overall trended in the proper direction, I think the data has been supporting them being less and less kind of aggressive in their rate cuts. And that's why, you know, I think we may have a longer, longer time um, before we see those cuts. Like three for this year, is I think that's even starting to come into doubt in my own mind, to be honest. When do you think the first one will be? I don't even know if we're going to see one in, in like uh, around the midpoint of the year. I think it might be the latter half of the year before we see anything. That's what I'm hoping for. I, yeah. I think there's like a under 50% chance it happens in June as the first one. I, w- I would go yep. slightly over on the on the latter there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is it's it's kind of the same as the last graph. It's just way easier to visually appreciate because it's a line mm-hmm. graph. But it's just the consumer price index year over year percent change as of February. So you can see all items. We we have come down quite a bit. It is pretty impressive what they did in a short amount of time, to be honest. Because they mm-hmm. at one point, you know, Jerome Powell is being said he's gonna crash the economy and Yellen said he made a huge mistake and she is wrong. Yellen was incorrect. So hindsight yeah the market's been very resilient that market and the economy sorry they're very resilient to these rate cuts uh, rate hikes yeah now there are two reasons why we the big reason to not buy tlt is if you're thinking that this is the new norm right we are not going to have rate cuts this is just how it is i Mm -hmm. don't think that's realistic um there are two big reasons one when you're in a recession you have a decrease in rates. You have to try to stimulate the economy, right? Mm-hmm. I, I'm not saying that this is an accurate graph. I then big grain of salt on these fear indexes and recession changes yeah. here. This is not like a, you know, don't pay your money on this. But according to them, May of this year is when we have the highest probability of starting a recession, <laughs> right? I'm trying to see what is the percentage of the likelihood they give it over there, though. I can't quite read the. Uh... Okay, well, so over seventy percent certainty. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, I I don't I believe it. Again. I don't I don't know about that, but it's, yeah. I feel like just like one analyst made this graph and it got passed around between a bunch of news channels. <laughs> I don't I Probably. don't know about that. Um, here's the the bigger instance. We're going broke. Uh, America's <laughs> not doing well. Um, the total debt was at, I think it was at 34 trillion, uh, when I looked earlier. So how compounding interest works, which a lot of our politicians apparently don't understand because, and okay. on both sides of the aisle, last, uh, three presidents did not do well on budgeting. They, uh, didn't understand it, but essentially when you have a high interest rate and you're spending 6 trillion a year on the economy, or I'm sorry, on, on, from the government as the budget, when you have a high interest, high interest rate, you get screwed. So if you could look at the 2010, you know, we, we paid 196 billion interest, 10 years later, 345, that's mm. not a terrible increase. That's actually okay. 10 years, not the worst. However, last year, 660 billion. <laughs> okay? so that's wild. Almost double. <laughs> The entire Defense Department budget is that seven hundred billion or nine hundred billion. I can't remember. I think it we're almost in that like territory. Yeah, you, yeah, almost the entire defense budget is now interest. It's, interest alone. It's ridiculous. So, I don't even. I, yeah, this is a problem. If the Federal <laughs> Reserve doesn't decrease rates, I think Biden said we'll hit forty-five trillion by twenty thirty. It's going to be way faster than that. It's not even gonna be close because Perfect. they always budget and then they spend way more than what they budgeted just from a bunch of random shit happening. So if you put interest on top of that, this is a problem. We're gonna spend from the 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 total deficit of like thirty four trillion, a monstrosity number of that is the last six years. Mm-hmm. It's it's I I don't know if they just don't understand compound interest or what, but if the Federal Reserve kept interest rates at this number your TLT shares don't matter because bonds are shit now. Are we, we, we have, we can't pay back our debt. There's a, 
bullets are going to be more important. Bullets and food. So <laughs> it's okay, Dylan. Uh, I love it. <laughs> Get, getting a little aggressive there, are we? But I, I understand the logic. That's pretty crazy, though. But yeah, it's they they have to. They can't keep it at this rate. It's just not sustainable. And you, you'll see people who don't understand this being like, well, in the nineties, we had 15%. Well, we didn't have 34 trillion in debt. So that's not, that's a stupid thing to say. It's just a dumb yeah, thing yeah. to say. So yeah, 15% is, I don't, if that's not possible, um, yes. a 1% chance, I should never say a definitive <laughs> statement, but it's, it's just not the same environment. So eventually they do have to decrease. Um, I'm going to continue to do this puts and sell around 97. I did not get to sell around 97 this time because it, it didn't hit my limit order. It was like sell, 20 cents away. Sell what at 97? My So I got assigned puts, uh, 95, selling 97. So I'm trying to make 2% with every move. So you're going to sell calls at 97? No, 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 no. Sell the shares that I got assigned on the puts. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'm trying to buy, get assigned around 93 and sell around 97. I'm trying to do about trade 2% the per move of the 50,000 I'm messing with. Okay. So you're just trading the channel basically at this point. All yeah, right. That makes sense. I just want to clarify that uh, as far as what instrument you're using to exit at 97. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Man. It's it's not a it's not really a wheel strategy. It's that's not really how it, it's close enough, but not really. Yeah. So yeah, you'd, you'd have to sell a, a call at 97 in order to make, actually make it a wheel. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I might. I don't know. We'll see. All right, guys. Catch you next one.